So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the receive side of things and, and what it takes to actually to uh, to track one of these down. Um, again, receiving is almost as simple as transmitting as far as the minimum equipment you need, which is just a handheld. Uh, as you kind of saw, we can turn the radio on. You can hear the you can hear the strength of the signal. Um, a lot of times, there's uh, you know radios have S meters on them, so you, when you hear a stronger signal, you know you're getting closer, or you know you're you're moving in the right direction. Um, so at a bare minimum, just a handheld is usually enough. You can use a, a technique called body shielding, where you hold the radio against your body and spin around in a circle like 360. And whenever you find the weakest signal, that's typically because your body is blocking it and tells you that it's behind you. So that's uh, body shielding or body, body fading. If all you have is just a handheld, you can use that as a, as a method to um, hopefully tell a direction from, from where you are. Um, some radios, especially some of these newer, like the Baofeng radios, I found that their S meter is really not very useful. It's really pretty much just a digital squelch open or squelch close, so you don't get a lot of information from those. But most of the other radios have a nice uh, multi multi uh, resolution S meter, and so they're pretty useful. Um, but what's the, the next step you're going to want to you're going to want to get after after just having a receiver is normally a directional antenna because then you can really get a uh, get an idea of stronger signal, more directionality from from the from something like a Yagi. So I showed this one here. This was one that I got from uh, a fellow in Australia. They they made it for a club, and I had him send me one. This is really nice. It's got flexible elements, and um, I've used this quite a bit on, on most of my hunts. That that little sniffer plugs right onto here. And, uh, But you don't need to go so fancy. You can actually build yourself a, a three element Yagi out of just some some uh, tape measure material. So take the Velcro off and you've got a, uh, a simple little three element Yagi. Works pretty much just as good as this one over here. Um, the plans are available on the internet. Uh, very easy to find. If you just search tape measure Yagi, you can see that there's not a lot to it. It's very lightweight. It's nice that you don't have to worry about breaking elements. If you push it into a bush or something like that, you know they're they're meant to kind of fold over. Um, we actually had a building party at uh, at uh, the last couple or at a couple of hand meets that I've I've been to, and and uh, this worked really well for a club building project to get people to to put these together. Um, as you can imagine, it's it's probably about ten bucks in parts if you didn't already have it in uh, in your shack. How does that measure up to something, man? <laughs> <laughs> Your elements are already pre pre uh, marked for cutting too. <laughs> um, one of the things you'll find after you've got your uh, your Yagi and your uh, receiver is you know hopefully you, you swing the beam around you you know when you're pointing in the in the direction of the transmitter normally you'll have your strongest signals so you know it's that way you'll get in the car and you'll you'll drive a little bit and um, hopefully get out take continual bearings as you're as you're getting closer and closer and eventually uh, find it. However, one thing you'll probably find as you start to get close is uh, you get so the signals are so strong that they're they're maxing out your S meter, and you get full scale S meter readings no matter where you turn. In fact, even if you were to take the antenna off, you might be getting full scale readings. So you need a way to knock the to knock the signal down. And for that, we typically use attenuators. Uh, there's a few different attenuators you can use. There are fixed attenuators. This is one I bought on eBay. It's just a little SMA to SMA uh, 20 dB attenuator. So you just put this in line between your, your radio and your antenna and you've just knocked the signal down 20 dB. 
So that's a nice, it was like about a seven buck thing to knock your signal down. So, uh, and here's another one that was BNC based. I think, I think these ones, uh, the guy who sold them on eBay was actually sold them as oscilloscope um, attenuators, but they work fine for, for fox hunting. And for fox hunting, we're not really concerned about exactly what the value is. It's 20 dB or 18 dB or 22. All we care about is the signal's knocked down enough and we can, we can actually tell a difference between front and back again. So the values aren't critical for that. Um, these are fixed values. Um, there's other options that you can go that, uh, that have multiple values. This is a, a switched attenuator, a passive switch attenuator. And basically it's built with a lot of uh, individual compartments inside, each one controlled by a switch and, a, and <coughs> three resistors. It'll allow you to, you know, you put this in and it knocks five dB out of the signal. This one acts on another 10, so a total of 15. And you can keep putting these switches in as you're getting closer and closer, knocking the signal down further and further as you go. Pretty much I find that when you've got all these switches in like that, you're there. It's time to get out of the car. <laughs> um, so switch attenuators are very nice. This is another one that I, I uh, started to build a kit out of this. I was seeing if I could build one that was just out of surface mount material without, or surface mount parts without stages in between. And uh, still got to study this one a little bit more, but my goal was to just build a nice little, little small one. And again, I'll have all these things out here for you to come peek at after the, after the talk. Um, oh, another thing you can do, and this is always a good thing to keep with you, is if you find that you're getting too strong and you take the antenna off, or even with your, your rubber duck on and you're getting full strength everywhere, if you just put something like a paper clip in, that's going to give you just a really crappy antenna, but that's kind of the goal when you're really close, is you need to get the signal weaker so you're able to, to tell the difference. So it's a good thing to just kind of keep one of these with you when you kind of find yourself, you're, you're in the area between too much signal and too weak signal with an antenna and without an antenna. Now there's one more attenuator I want to show you, which is really kind of the, the top of the line that, that really works well, and it's called an active attenuator or a, uh, an offset attenuator. Um, here's two examples of it, one that I, uh, that I built inside this little box here. It's got a, a switch with a dial on it, and here's another one built into an Altoids tin with uh, a circuit board from um, a fellow in Santa Barbara who sells these as, as kits. Now the way a, an offset attenuator works is, um, well as you know, if you, if you mix two signals together you get four signals come out of the mixture. The two originally you put in plus the sum and the difference of those two signals. So the offset attenuator works on the principle of creating a, uh, in this case, a 400, a 4 megahertz signal. So this is transmitting a, or creating a 4 megahertz signal that mixes with the signal on, say that you're hunting, say 146.565, and it will create an image um, on the sum or on the difference of those two frequencies and the sum. So you can either tune up 4 megahertz or down 4 megahertz from uh, from the frequency you're looking for, and you will hear the mixing product of this four megahertz plus that one. Now, the nice thing about that is because we put a pot on the on the four megahertz that we're generating, we can control how strong that four megahertz is. Therefore, we can control how strong that image is, and you can actually take that image down to almost nothing. You can get it to the point where you're this far away from a 50 watt transmitter, and you can actually knock the signal down because you're creating the image, you're listening on the image, and you can knock that down to nothing. So, an active attenuator is a really good way to uh, when you get really in close and you need to knock the signal down, you can knock any, any signal strength down to, to almost nothing. So active attenuators are probably your third most important uh, element or, uh, or tool that you'll want after a receiver and a, uh, and a beam is, is an active attenuator. There are some other methods for, uh, for sniffing. I want to show that one. This one is one that I just, I just recently built and uh, it's, uh, it works on the principle of a Time difference of arrival, or TDOA, and basically it's got two elements that uh, that fold out. Uh, these are both dipoles here, so one active and, and one um, uh, counterpoise. And then I've got a little chip on here that basically is working right now. It's a, it's like a it's a pick chip, but it's basically working just like a five 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 timer. It's just switching one of the output lines, high and low, high and low at, at uh, an audio frequency like 500 hertz. And using uh, some diodes, some pin RF pin diodes here and here, uh, as that 500 hertz switches, when it goes high, that basically enables this antenna, and when it goes low, it disables this antenna and enables this antenna. The the principle is by switching between these two an antennas, um, it looks at the phase, the RF phase, uh, the phase of the RF wave coming into the signal, and by switching between these two, if they happen to be equidistant from the transmitter, you're not going to get. Uh, any change in, in listening from this location to this location. However, if they've got a different location from the transmitter, as you switch back and forth, it's going to impart that 500 hertz tone onto the, onto the uh, FM signal and you're going to actually pick it up on the FM receiver. So, so what you can kind of hear is, as I, I think it's in the room, it's not doing so well, but you, 
what you'll find when it's a little, uh, I think without so many reflections, is when you're like this, you'll hear that tone and it tends to kind of fade away. This one is getting more multi-path as it comes in. And then it gets stronger when you go this way. So, um, although it's, it, it'll work a little bit better outside, but generally the idea is you kind of swing this thing around and when your antennas are equidistant, that 500 hertz tone goes away. So you just kind of listen for that tone, adjust till it's, till it's gone, and now you know that your antennas are equidistant and you can, you can hopefully head in the T, in the direction of the T. But there's one problem with equidistant and that is what? Both ways. Both ways, right. So you don't know if it's this way or this way. Mm. So, um, one way, to, the, the best way to, to beat that is to kind of move 90 degrees, take another bearing, and hopefully it's going to tell you it's either this way or this way, or you get a little closer. Um, but there is one mod that you can make to this, but I'm, that's the next thing I'm going to work on, and that's why I'm not using a, a pick chip, but I'm, or I'm not using a 555 timer, but I'm actually using a pick chip, is I'm going to look at the, uh, the I'm going to feed the audio from the receiver back into the chip so I can look at the phase at the time that I switch. And if I notice that the phase goes up when I switch, I'll know that this one's getting closer. And I know if it goes down when I switch, I know that this one's getting further away. So I can sample the phase at the time I switch, and I can tell which one of these is closer. Hopefully that'll mean I'll uh, put two LEDs on here, and it'll tell you left or right as you're swinging. So over here it'll say it's to the left, then both lights will turn off, and then over here it'll say to the right. So that'll get rid of that ambiguity on the, on the direction, which will make this thing uh, a little bit more useful for, for not passing, passing through. And then my other plan with uh, hopefully going forward with this is to realize uh, people have mentioned that what they'll use is two of these things in their car. Um, one pair going left and right, and so they have a light in their car that tells them whether it's to the left or the right, and another pair in the car going front to back, so it tells them front to back. So you get four LEDs in your car as you're driving around, and it'll just tell you, is it front, back, left, or right? You know, sometimes you'll see two of them. And if you can imagine, that's going to be pretty straightforward to just drive until you see that you've passed it. Now make a right turn, especially with our nice gridded streets we have out here. Uh, it's going to make it pretty easy to hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, once, once I get it built up, to, uh, to drive to it. And this is, um, well, I'll go a little bit more. The other thing that I'm realizing is instead of having th four antennas like this, that's kind of overkill because I'm, I don't need to use these two antennas. I can just have three antennas in this orientation and, and do the same thing. So I could do left, right with these two and front, back with these. And then I kind of realized if I, if I switch it more like this into a triangle pattern, I can actually get six different directions off of it. Um, so hopefully that's going to be my next goal is I'm going to build one of these with three antennas and six LEDs in a, in a pseudo circle and, and see how well that's going to work. And that really kind of leads into um, the other type of T. Oh, let me, let me bring up one more point about, about this TDOA. And that is um, that it is not at all affected by signal strength. So where you have other transmitter uh, direction finding stuff, as you're getting closer, your signal gets stronger now to the S meter is full scale everywhere you turn. This is not at all affected by signal strength. So you can be right here, uh, right next to a 50 watt transmitter and you'll still get that phase um, adjustment or, or tone going present or away regardless of the power. So that's, that's another benefit of having something like this in your arsenal, that if you have something that's too powerful for your S meter, you can switch to this. Um, and this kind of leads into, um, this is part kind of a, a precursor or a, or a dumbed down version of a, of a Doppler direction finder. Um, Doppler is not something I have a lot of experience with, um, but I know a lot of T hunters have, have used them. Um, generally what that looks like is say four antennas on the roof of a car, and you have an, an electrical switcher that is basically bouncing between them, kind of like the way I was switching between those two, it switches between the four, effectively in a circle, which is effectively like taking an antenna and rotating it at 500 hertz around in a, in a circle like that. And by looking at the phase of that audio that's generated, that 500 hertz audio that you'll hear, since you know when you're switching what antenna up, you know what phase that it should be, uh, assuming, or you can look at the phase that it's coming in and that'll tell you the car. So doctors typically will have 16 or even 32 LEDs in a circle and they'll tell you, you know, hey, it's this direction or it's this direction. You know, they just will light one of them up and tell you which way it is. Um, Dopplers are also kind of cool that they, uh, they can work on a really short signal. So they can uh, be set up to remember the last signal they hit. So if someone just kind of hit it and released it, it would say it's over there. Even though we stopped transmitting, it would remember which direction it was and we'll, we'll keep showing you. Um, the one downside to the Dopplers are that they typically need a good, strong signal to, uh, to and because you're not using anything directional, you're just using quarter wave antennas, you know, they, they uh, don't have nearly the volume that you have with some of these directions. Uh, oh, and that reminds me of the quad I wanted to show. This is another uh, directional antenna that, I, that I've used in the past. I haven't used it recently. I, uh, I built this, I punched a hole in my, in my van and, and ran this right through the, through the center. And um, 
I was able to take bearings from the freeway as I'm driving around. We just put a little wooden mast in here, and, and it uh, makes it very easy for a driver or passenger to swing it around and, and take bearings. You get a lot of strange looks, too. You do get a lot of strange looks. Now, one thing that I built into this one that's really kind of cool is um, what one thing that's, that, uh, that happens with uh, polarity is important with, with these signals. And if you... Uh, hunt the wrong polarity, you can you can be a signal down maybe three dB. So you get a, a much weaker signal when you're on the wrong polarity, horizontal versus vertically. Also, um, signals tend to change polarity. People say when they bounce. So you know, a signal might go out horizontal, hit a mountain, it'll come back uh, vertical. And so if you're hunting the wrong polarity, you're likely to be looking for the reflections more often than the than the actual um, direct signal. So I built this in with a the ability to change polarity from oh, inside yeah. the car. I can actually oh, rotate this from 90 degrees <laughs> horizontal or vertical, changing the feed point. So when the feed point is down at the bottom, it's uh, horizontal, horizontally polarized, and when it's off to the, to the side here, it's vertically polarized. So we start the hunt, and we, we, uh, we, we sw swing this thing back and forth, figure out which direction is strongest and which polarity is strongest, and then we'll typically hunt with that, but, but even check multiple times as we go. And, and change it if we need to. Yeah. So that's kind of, I, I like this thing. That's why I go through all the effort of hauling this all the way out here just for a, for a show and tell because I think that polarity change is kind of cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool, yeah. Um, oh, here's, a, here's another example of, of a, uh, I mean, any people that do satellite work, you might be yeah. familiar of the aero antennas. Sure. Um, they make a very nice collapsible uh, three element uh, two meter Yagi, very similar to what you see here, but it all breaks down into a small thing. This, it's also nice that it's got a, uh, 7 element 440 Yagi included with these two. So if you wanted to use it for a 440 P9, you can do that as well. And, and uh, here's another tape measure Yagi. What's cool about this one is the uh, attenuator that I talked about is actually built inside this, oh, this really? little plastic tape. So just wow. adjusting this adjusting this with your thumb, you can adjust the signal strength that's, that's coming into your radio. It makes works. it very easy for uh, you know, adjusting the strength as you're getting when you're getting closer, you just add a little more attenuation. You knock the signal down, and it works very well. This is um, this was designed by uh, by Marvin in Santa Barbara, and I think he sells. I bought this as a kit from him. I think it's on the order of uh, sixty bucks or something like that. So he's he's got those. That's kind of a nice way to, to kind of keep it all in one one package. This is called the Mark IV sniffer. This is VK3 YNG in Australia. This is kind of like the the top of the line direction finding tool receiver. It's a custom-built receiver specifically for transmitter hunting. Um, price varies a lot. I, I think it goes somewhere between 180 sometimes up to maybe 300 bucks. So I'm not really sure what the what the current price is, but it's really nice. It pretty much does everything you need. Um, it's got built-in attenuator and an automatic attenuation selection. So as you're getting closer, you'll hear it'll just put in more attenuation. So you don't even need to think about attenuation. You can just kind of listen to the tones. Plug a headphone in, you can hear that. that uh, the audio signal strength on one ear and the FM signal on the other, and it makes it a really easy way to, to hunt. But only if you're really dedicated. I mean, I, I don't even—I hesitate to start people with this because it makes it too easy. You kind of want to <laughs> get used to some of the uh, more hands-on equipment before you before you spoil yourself with something like that. Um, well, uh, let's see. Oh, very good. Thanks. This is um, a 40-segment S meter I built to tap. I, I tapped into the AGC line on my mobile rig in the car when we were using this quad. Um, we put this up on the dashboard and it's basically got 40 LEDs that light up on the, uh, uh, just like your S meter would on your mobile rig. It's cool because it's uh, really bright, sits up on the dashboard, everyone in the car can see how strong the signal is as you're swinging it around. And the other thing that I found that's really cool about it is um, typically right about here at, at the 25% point is where my S meter on the mobile would cut out. But when I was using this, I could still see you know 10 more segments of, of information. And also at about the 75% point is where the S meter would max out on my mobile rig. And again, see here I had another 10, 10 uh, digits of, of, of information. So it gave a much wider range uh, for, for an S meter for, for that. And again, this was just, you have to have uh, you know, the proper place to tap into for, for your particular radio. But uh, something like this is kind of a cool way to, to add a nice, easier to see uh, display. This is the way most of our fox hunts kind of looked. And in fact, we would still use this if I wanted to hide something that was a higher power. It's pretty much just an ammo box. Uh, inside, I've got uh, an HT and a and a gel cell battery, and uh, I took it out. But this Picon would live inside there. Uh, we built it so you can lock it up. So I've got a bicycle lock. You can just lock this thing to a tree, and go uh, turn it on, hide it somewhere, and leave it there for days on end. And, and uh, hopefully, people will will find it. And uh, one one easy way to have just a, a box that you hide 